Welcome back, everyone, to Romance of the Three Kingdoms. So, uh, last episode, uh, we welcomed Zhuge Liang and his entourage into service. And, um, yeah, now we have the Sleeping Dragon. Uh, so Liu Bei is crazy strong now with this guy. Uh, you know, we, we can take a look at him if you want. <laughs> Obviously, I think we have to go into uh, here to take a look at him. Oh, uh, we're still in uh, another town. Uh, let's, let's rest, I think. Yeah. So, uh, our reputation is a thousand. Uh, we gain more synergistic slots. Yeah, we did that last uh, episode. Um, apparently there's a traveling merchant about, and there's a lady of leadership as well. Interesting. So, yeah, I, I, I love... I, I mentioned this uh, last episode. I really love how... Um, they've made it feel more, um, more kind of like an RPG, like a classic RPG where things are happening. Uh, in the older ROTKs, you did have these special events that could be triggered, uh, if things were happening, uh, in a certain sequence. However, you didn't really know what the trigger events were unless you looked into the game files or knew them, of course. Um, and obviously you didn't have the option, I don't think. Of, of of telling them to trigger it out. Maybe maybe you did, and I can't remember that. But um, either way, uh, there's a lot more other random uh, stuff that's happening too, which is uh, excellent. Uh, like I said, the the middle game or or most of the game, you'd spend uh, just kind of spamming things, and we'll probably do that a little bit here in this playthrough as well. But uh, there is a lot more. Um, just it feels more real just just things happening of their own accord around you stuff that you can respond to or not respond to so there's more choice i think involved um which is great so loving it anyway uh water mirror master is back uh you certainly are working hard if you keep that up it won't be long before your name is known far and wide it's great you just have to keep putting in the effort without getting cocky all right mm. Uh, we acquire a ton of different wisdoms here, it looks like. So let's head uh, back home and see what we can learn. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can learn any of these. Uh, not quite enough there for that, but maybe a tactic. Um, no, I think it's just telling us that... Um, they're telling us that we gained points, so I don't, I don't see anything that we can learn. Yeah, hmm. so... It was just flashing over here, letting us know, hey, you have some wisdom. Maybe check to see if you can spend it. Uh, but we could not. Uh, anyway, uh, we can trigger the Battle of Chang Ban. Uh, we should probably do that. Uh, so Chang Ban is uh, an incredible uh, moment in history where Cao Cao decides to begin his southern campaign, putting an end to Liu Bei, the wretched Liu Bei, right? Uh, who uh, threatens to uh, challenge his... Uh, budding empire if you will uh it's not even really budding honestly at this point it's uh it's pretty dang big all right he should be happy with this but Cao Cao, we know he has ambitions to rule all of china um and he just pretends uh that he is uh you know uh, working for the, the emperor or the people or so to speak but we know the difference we know what Cao Cao's up to he's up to no good so, um, Battle of Chang Ban uh, is us basically retreating. Uh, several things happen. A bunch of people die. Um, Zhang Fei uh, defends uh, the bridge, Chang Ban Bridge, uh, to allow the force to cross. Uh, Zhao Yun also, I believe, saves uh, Liu Bei's child. So, apparently, we can trigger this already. Uh, we have zero months left, so we have to do it now. Continue it. Under the urging of a subordinate, Liu Song sent an envoy to the Cao Cao forced to negotiate a surrender. My liege, Liu Song has disbanded their army and wishes to negotiate a surrender with you, Master Cao Cao. Come on. I understand and accept their surrender. Tell Lord Liu Song that he's made a wise decision. Oh. I shall. In lieu of my liege, I give my humblest of thanks. Mm. That leaves the eldest, Liu Qi and Liu Bei. How will they react? If Liu Song has surrendered to Cao Cao, we will not stand a chance against the Cao Cao force by staying in Xin Yi. We must request aid for Lord Liu Qi, 
move to Changsha, and use the opportunity to come up with a plan against the Cao Cao Rus. Right. But we can't abandon the people of Jing province. Then I shall prepare our army to escort those who wish to leave. Yeah, so Liu Bei being the kind soul that he is, obviously he could have fled uh, with his officers, his major retinue in tow, and just got out of there super fast, right? However, um, Cao Cao wasn't the friendliest of people when he's marching uh, through uh, to take areas. Sometimes they may have killed a bunch of the people living there. You know, it kind of happens. So uh, Liu Bei, being uh, the man of the people, decides to bring uh, the villagers with him. Uh, and thus, uh, because it includes you know sick people, elderly and whatnot, uh, they have to go slowly. So... Zhu Liang issued the proclamation, loyal citizens gathered in droves, obviously the people that wanted to stay with Liu Bei, gathered in droves uh, for their escort, uh, with their numbers reaching into the tens of thousands. The money. Forgive me for putting you through such hardship, everyone. Please hold on for just a little while longer. I bring news. Our people in the rear are being pursued by the Cao Cao force in Chang Ban. They've caught up to us already. Guan Yu, Sheng Fei, I will go rescue our people. You must hurry to Cheng Sha. Master Liu Bei, forgive me for sounding cruel, but to save ourselves, we must leave them. I refuse. As liege, I cannot stand idly by while my people suffer. All right, and leave it to me. It's my duty to put my life on the line for the sake of the people. Sheng Fei, these folk have come all the way and gone through all this hardship following your rule. If something were to happen to you, brother, what would become of them? You're right. I'll leave it to you, Zhang Fei. I'll handle it. I will show you the power of Lord Zhang Fei of Yan. Let us hurry, brother. Zhang Fei's courageous spirit shall not go to waste. During this, Zhao Yun had been caught up in a fierce battle with the Cao Cao force and lost sight of Liu Bei's wife and children, who he was tasked with protecting. My lady! Master Ado, Where are you? Curse me! Please let them be safe! Zhao Yun! My lady! Master Ado, thank goodness you're okay! My lady, take my horse. We must leave this place at once. I cannot leave an officer without their horse. Take my child instead! But... No! Is that the enemy? Please, guard Otto. Do not worry about me. Just go. My lady, what do you mean? Entrusting Zhao Yun with her child, Mi Shi threw herself into a well. Zhao Yun, left to care for Otto, rode hard and fast. Do not worry, Master Otto. I will see to it that you're returned safely. Halt, enemy. I shall take your life here and now. Get out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> so tough! Who in heaven's name is that? Those who seek to oppose the young master will taste my might. Though they rode alone, there was not a single officer of the Cao Cao force who could stop Zhao Yun's push. Cross the bridge quickly. I'll hold off the enemy here. Zhang Fei! Xiao Yun, you're alive, but what happened to brother's lady and child? Master Otto is here. My lady, she threw herself into a well to help us escape. I see. Brother's already gone ahead. You should make your way after him. Understood. Stay safe, Zhang. Stay, stay. <clears throat> stay safe, Zhang Fei. Don't worry. I'll handle this. Looks like our guests came early. Step forward only if you wish to die. Zhang Fei stood guard at Changban Bridge, and as they shouted out, the frightened Cao Cao force began to make their retreat. Narrowly escaping peril, Liu Bei managed to arrive at Changsha with tens of thousands in tow. Liu Bei welcomed Liu Qi with open arms, and the Liu Bei force would make their triumphant return in the lands of Changsha. We now control Cheng Sha, uh, the merit of Wei Kong, 149 other people of Cao Cao's force increases, uh, Liu Song's force is wiped out, Cao Cao now controls Xin Yi, uh, their draft population decreases by a bunch, Cheng Sha's draft population increases by a lot, Zhang Fei, uh, Zhao Yun's merit uh, increases, uh, Liu Song, Kai Shi, and Mi Shi are all dead now. 
following officers join uh, Liu Bei Force, uh, Liu Qi, Yi Ji, Huo Jun, and Jiang Ling. Uh, Wei Yan, Li Yan, and Huang Zhu become free officers. Uh, martial reputation of Zhang Fei and Zhao Yun increases, and Liu Bei's culture increases. All right. Well, we're in our new home now. <laughs> Just like that. Uh, we're in Changsha, so that is uh, down here. Uh, I believe uh, we should gain the ability to move uh, west at some point. Perhaps. So I guess we'll see what kind of tales we have access to now. Uh, first, let's do our Lord's Debate. Let's see what this is about. <laughs> we shall begin the Lord's Debate. Debaters, demonstrate your sharp tongues and sharper wit. Actually, I do remember now, there was a uh, group debate. I said last time there was not, but I do remember now there was a, um, I guess, a debate tournament for better, for better, um, for no better uh, words for it. But anyway. Mm. They call it a Lord's Debate now, I guess. Hi. Yes, sir. Now, Lord Zushu, Lord Miju, step forth and bow. Hmm. You won't have a chance to retort. <laughs> Go on, try to convince me. Uh, yeah, let's control it. Waga Ronjutsu, Okiki Tadaku. Eek Kaida. Shirokuro Tsukete Oko. All right. So uh, we have more uh, intellect, so we do some damage. Uh, yeah, we do more damage if we play the consecutive number of cards, but apparently that's a little bit harder to do. Um, we could use four and then a special, but he might do five and a special. Let's just throw out four. Nice. So now he has two, three, three, and five. So he can throw out threes and a special. Uh, we're going to get another heed next. So let's throw out... I think he's probably going to throw out his special, right? Because if he throws out two rebuts and then a special, then we, we can't beat that. So I'm thinking about two argues, but if he just throws out two rebuts and saves his special, then we just, you know what I mean? So you, you kind of got to think about it, right? Yeah, so he did use his... Oh, no, he used... Uh, oh, I didn't even think that he might use that. That's a good play. So now he's in an even better position. He can do a one, two, and three. Let's do this. Um... Because I wanted to use the special there because the number was lower, but our number of cards was great. So uh, I think we win with this then, right? Yeah. Alright. Excellent. Uh, we gain culture and intellect XP. Zushu wins. That was a spectacular speech. Even as your opponent, I must admit I was impressed. <laughs> What's important is that we've come to an agreement. That's one for you, Zushu. A seemingly effortless win. <laughs> it would not have done to stumble over my words before you. Next, Lord Zushu, Lord Zhang Lang, step forth and bow. Feel the sting of my words. <laughs> we'll see about that. Sure. Uh, I'm guessing... <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing the final boss is Zhuge Liang. <laughs> We're probably going to lose that one. But we'll give it a shot. Um, Alright, so he's got one, four, and five. Uh, we do two. Let's throw this out. So now, see, the thing is, like, okay, what is he going to do, right? Um, well, if we throw this out, then we automatically win. And it'll do more damage. Plus, we'll have three uh, heeds. Uh, 
Yeah, you're kind of hoping you uh, bait out their abilities because now he's going to destroy us, right? Let's try to do this anyway, uh, because if he doesn't go all in, then then we can win, actually. Right? Oh, look at that, CB1. Nice. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, we gain ingenuity as well. Nice. Should be able to use that at some point soon. Thank you. I may have lost the debate, but I also won in that it was a thoroughly enjoyable discussion. <laughs> I've also gained a new perspective from our back and forth. Despite the skill of the debater you were up against, you nonetheless succeeded and came out on top. <laughs> Oh, you can hardly call it a debate if the other party is not at least one's equal in wordsmithing. That being said, I shall humbly accept your praise with gratitude. Lastly, Lord Zhu Shu, Lord Zhu Ge Liang, step forth and bow. I won't be beaten so easily. Are you sure you wish to challenge me? Of course. Now let's begin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> Some people are built different. It's <sighs> not, uh, not going well for us already. So he starts with 3 5 5 and a special. Hmm. Let's just confute. Okay. Ow. Hmm. Can I do one, two, and special? No, that doesn't work. Okay. So two and five will come down. So we could throw out one, two, three. And then he would have to throw out two rebuts and a special to win. Um. Okay, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, alright. So now, oh my gosh, he can just destroy us. Oh, we are screwed now. Oh no. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, that was the expected result, but yeah, we did kind of misplay. Uh, it, it's a pretty interesting system, though. So this is it. Oh, may not have ended the way you hoped for, but you never gave up. Your persistence shall be rewarded. Alright, uh, so we finished our Lord's Debate. Um, gained... Uh, actually, everyone seems to have gained something here, so that's good. Liu Bei's charisma increases too. Zushu, Miju, Zhang Lang, and Zhu Ge Liang gain culture rep, uh, and we acquire wisdom. So, hey doesn't really matter that we lost. It was uh, good either way. Uh, we can now also begin the Battle of Chibi, the preparation of which uh, is underway now. Um, that's good news. I thought we were uh, out of that one, but maybe not. Uh, let's see. So, uh, yeah, I guess we might as well do that, right? Um, we do have a mission, it looks like, to do... Uh, I, I believe to do a workshop stuff. I'm trying to remember how to check check our current missions. Um, I don't see it here. Let's see. I don't want to slander people. Um, okay, we can see the log. Maybe we can go back to... Uh, yeah, the whole log is filled with um, just what happened this episode, so. I think we were on a mission to do a workshop. Obviously, we don't have public atti uh, our public attitude increased here yet. So, uh, let's um, inquire a little bit first. 
Apparently in the farmland market and workshop there is uh, an individual around here. So let's Hi. keep inquiring. Eventually we should spot them, right? <laughs> oh, my back. Uh, I'm Zushu and you are Zhao Wei. I think this guy, uh, did he join Shu? Yeah, I guess he, he's got the green, right? So that's kind of the dead giveaway, but I thought he was a Cao Cao officer. No, no, he was a member of Guan Yu's staff. Uh, he schemed uh, up various courses of action with uh, when Guan Yu was defeated. He accompanied Guan Yu in his escape from my castle, but was killed. Excellent. All right, new uh, officer recruited. So uh, we will rest. Uh, apparently, uh, we are still weak right now. Okay. All right, now we're good. Um. All right, we have more uh, troops now, but uh, they do too. <laughs> As you can see, uh, Cao Cao just kind of keeps growing. You know what I mean? Kind of a problem. Luo Jun and Zhou Kong are having a fight. Uh, which suggestion um, is triggered above them both? Mm. Alright. <laughs> We're gonna ruin these guys. Bam. Half dead. Uh, we're gonna gain argue next turn, so um, let's throw out just an assert then. Oh, looks like he's using his special. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah. So now we can do this. Ooh, okay. Well, let's give it a shot. Okay, good. He's an idiot. <laughs> That's perfect. Alright. <laughs> the kind of... I guess you can only throw out one card if you want, just to throw it away, but anyway. Uh, you've won a total of five debates and unlocked Zhuge Liang's Young Portrait. Could be used in the editor. Alright. Cool, so there's unlocks too. That's awesome. Um, Alright. Gain some wisdom. This guy actually has some skills, but his intellect is even lower, <laughs> so this is going to hurt here. Bam. I guess uh, the max you can do is like half. Maybe. <laughs> I guess I didn't realize I was doing that much damage to him. I guess I could have just probably hammered him faster, I guess. <laughs> Alright, we dealt with him, uh, and our trust increases automatically, which is cool. So, uh, definitely a good reason to do it, I think. Um, and obviously, oh, we only have one strategy point now, by the way, because we're not the tactician, of course, right? So, that makes sense now, now that I think about it. We had five before. That's okay. Uh, one strategy point is more than enough for us. Uh, I th think we should... Uh, maybe we don't even need espionage, honestly. Although... Might as well do it, right? That way we get um, free merit, culture rep, and a little bit of experience, so that's good. Alright, Cao Cao is uh, now done with his northern campaign as well. So Gong Sun Kong is gone. All the Gong Suns are gone now. Um... 
we could apply ourselves here too. Uh, obviously, uh, with Chibi, uh, things will probably change on the map again. But uh, yeah, let's do a little bit of work. Alright. Looks like something's happening as well. Can I have a word with you, Zushu? I'm thinking about appointing you as a tactician. Tactician? So my eye for strategy has been recognized. It's in need of ingenuity. Uh, so we could become a tactician, but I think... Player officers, common officer, uh, our int is high. Um, yeah, so uh, that, that's cool and all, but the current tactician is Zhu Ye Liang, and I think that's probably an inappropriate change. Um, let's think about this. So let me just make sure that's the case. I mean, it should be, right? Um, so city officers, yeah. Tactician is uh, Zhu Ye Liang, so uh, we're not going to take that. Because uh, I'm pretty sure they can only be one tactician, right? Should be. Uh, we'll decline that for now. So, uh, anyway. Um, we did apply ourselves uh, to work here, so we'll inquire a bit. Uh, gain sympathy with Liu Bei, that's always good. Eh? <laughs> And uh, I actually can't remember who that is. <laughs> oh, Sima Ji, okay. Excellent. So uh, we don't have enough to actually do science this round, so uh, let's go home and rest. Um, a request to prove innocence, okay. Uh, Zhang Fei is visiting us again. Seem rather worked up. Don't say that. I've heard of your exploits of late. I endeavored wholeheartedly to best you. I only got this far because of you, Zhang Fei. I'm glad to hear that. I may be able to reach even greater heart heights with you. Let us push, pu uh, let us push each other to improve while we support brother. Mm. Hmm. We may be rivals, but our thoughts on Liu Bei are the same. Let's continue to build each other up. So we're rivals now? <laughs> okay. I guess. <laughs> It's kind of ridiculous, but all right. Uh, all right. I'm not sure exactly what the rivals will do. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's trigger the Battle of Chibi since there's only one uh, a month left anyway. Continue the preparation. Aspiring to unite the land under his rule, Cao Cao gathered his forces along the northern banks of the Yangtze in anticipation of a decisive battle with Sun Quan, the ruler of Jiangdong. Mm. I hear that the Sun Quan force are assembling their best soldiers. If only we had a way to cut their officers off from their men before the battle begins. Please leave that to me. I am an old acquaintance of Zhou Yu. If I ask him, he is sure to seed the field. Come on. I leave this to you. I expect outstanding results. Understood. The next day, Jiang Gan readied a small vessel and set sail for the Sun Chuan's force encampment, seeking to meet his old friend, Zhou Yu. Why, if it isn't Jiang Gan, how long has it been? <laughs> so you're here to delegate for Cao Cao, are you? Going to suggest that I surrender? <laughs> Uh, uh, come on, can I not call on an old friend without being accused of playing politics? It's been such a long time that I thought that I'd meet and reminisce. But if you only intend to insult me, I shall take my leave. Wait, I apologize, that was boorish of me. Things are as they are now, anyway. If you aren't here as a delegate, then you may stay. I would be honored to host a banquet to welcome an old friend. <laughs> Men, I'd like to introduce my old friend. This is Jiang Gan of Jiang Bei, but be at ease. He's not calling on any business from the South South. Hmm. Let's see. Tai Chi Chi, take my blade while we dine. Yes. Today, we feast to honor a bond between old friends. I'll have no talk of our conflict with South Cao. 
If anyone is rude enough to mention it, I order you to cut them down. Oh, understood. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Chung Gan, tonight I will drink to my heart's content, and I trust that you will do the same. Uh, I gratefully accept. <laughs> nah, I've drunk a bit too much. I apologize. I think I'll have to take my leave. Oh, by the way, Chung Gan, you can stay in my room for the night. I want to chat a little longer about the old times. If we must. You needn't pull me, I can walk by myself. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, um, in case you haven't caught on already, uh, there's some plots here. So, Zhou Yu, Zhou Yu, ah, you're already asleep. Mm. Hmm. This is bad, really bad. I completely missed my chance to negotiate. Oh. What's this letter though? Bagana. This is. It's a secret letter from Tsai Mao and Zhang Yun, in charge of our naval forces. It's addressed to Zhou Yu. So, so Tsai Mao and Zhang Yun have been corresponding with Zhou Yu? <sighs> Zhang Gan, Zhang Gan, just give me a few more days and I'll bring you Tsao Tsao's head. <laughs> huh? Oh, he's just talking in his sleep. <laughs> that startled me. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, so... Um... But this takes precedence. I must report this to Lord Cao Cao as soon as possible. Zhang Gan stashed away the secret letter in his pocket and stole out of the Sun Chuan force encampment without being seen. He then rushed back to the Cao Cao force camp on the northern shores of the Yangtze River. Lord Cao Cao, my greatest apologies. Zhou Yu has a heart as strong as steel. I could not convince him. Although I failed my initial mission, however, I learned of a most treacherous plan in the process. Please take a look at this. Hmm? A secret letter? <clears throat> Damn that Sai Mao and Zhang Yun too. To think the men to whom I entrust my navy were conspiring with the enemy all this time. <clears throat> Such insubordination will not be tolerated. Bring me Sai Mao and Zhang Yun at once. So, um... <clears throat> Lord Cao Cao, you summoned me. <clears throat> How is the training of our naval forces progressing? I need them to be ready for battle at a moment's notice. <clears throat> Excuse me. My lord, with all due respect, the navy still needs to focus on its training. Moving out now would be rash. <clears throat> <laughs> I see your scheme. You are plotting to waste my time. By the time your training is finished, you have sent Zhou Yu my head. What, what, what are you talking about? Why are you... I have nothing more to discuss with you. Men, take these fools and have them executed. With that, Cao Cao ordered Sai Mao and Zhang Yun to be executed at once. Only moments later, Cao Cao, Cao Cao, realized he had fallen victim to Zhou Yu's gambit, but by then, it was already too late. So yeah, uh, the main story there is uh, Zhou Yu uh, wrote that letter himself, uh, because he knew Zhang Gan uh, was heading uh, towards the camp, placed it in his, uh, uh, placed it in his uh, room, and uh, tricked Zhang Gan into thinking that he was drunk the whole time, of course and uh, letting him discover uh, the letter, so... <laughs> Lord Zhou Yu... Oh, I didn't realize there's more of it. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah. Lord Zhou Yu, it is just as you conceived. Cao Cao has executed Tsai Mao and Zhang Yun. <laughs> With those naval experts, Tsai Mao and Zhang Yun taken care of, there's no way they can win a battle on the water against us. Men, our battle with the Cao Cao force draws near. Make sure you are prepared. So yeah, uh, Zhou Yu, basically two Cao Cao officers die. <laughs> just like that, just gone. Excellent. Uh, so uh, now uh, we can do the linked fetters. Let's do that. As the great army of Cao Cao begins to flank the Yangtze, Zhou Yu was weaving a stratagem to completely annihilate the Cao Cao force for the impending confrontation. Sate. It is certain that our inevitable clash with the Cao Cao force will take place over water. <sighs> our experienced naval force will have the advantage, but the Cao Cao's force's large fleet poses a problem. <laughs> we could make use of a fire attack if there were a way to round them up. <laughs> Reporting. A man by the name of Pang Tong requests an audience with Lord Zhou Yu. Oh. Hmm. 
Hang Tong? Great timing. An old friend of mine. Let him through. Today. Hello there. I'm sorry to intrude, Lord Zhou Yu. I had heard several concerning stories, so I've stopped by to check on your well-being. <laughs> <laughs> you're very informed as well. Uh, as uh, You're well informed as usual, Peng Tong. I was just thinking about how he might destroy Cao Cao's great army. Naruhodo. I see. So your plan is to gather Cao Cao's army together and then set them all on fire. But the problem with that strategy is that it would be quite meaningless to use a fire attack if you allow the enemy fleet to scatter and escape afterward, am I correct? Ah. Indeed you are. That is exactly where I'm stuck. I've been plagued by this dilemma for a while. If we have to fight a long war, there's little hope of us winning. That's why we need a way to shorten this battle and annihilate Cao Cao's force, uh, forces army in one fell swoop. <laughs> then I have the perfect plan. Allow me to handle it, Lord Zhou Yu. I'll put any worries you have to rest once and for all. Oh, that sounds promising. Since you're so confident, I'll leave this matter to you. I await the report of your victory. Meanwhile, Cao Cao was preparing for the coming battle with Sun Chuan force. He set up a blockade on the northern banks of the Yangtze, mobilized a large number of ships, and focused on training his navy. There, the famed and wise Pang Tong offered his assistance, and Cao Cao gladly welcomed Pang Tong into his camp. Thank you for coming, Pang Tong. I have heard so much about you for so long, so I've heard that you are willing to give us some support. Then mm. again, I've also heard that you are friends with Zhou Yu. Wouldn't you be betraying your friend if you support <laughs> us? Zhou Yu is but a youth who relies solely on his wits and makes light of others. I'm already all of a, out of patience with him. When I heard rumors that you, Lord Cao Cao, were to launch a campaign, I felt supporting you would be the best opportunity to do it is right. <laughs> I see. I know the feeling well. In that case, we need not show restraint. Look over the army as you'd like, and give me your thoughts. Hmm. Hmm. How magnificent! Mm. Even the famed Sun Tzu, Wu Ji, and Sima Rangju would be no match for your military prowess, Lord Cao Cao. <laughs> Zhou Yu, it is only a matter of time before you face destruction. Mm. It is quite an honor to receive such words of praise, but is there some point we can improve upon, even a small thing? Hmm. Yes, there is perhaps one suggestion I could offer. It may be because many of your officers were raised in the north, but it seems they are unused to life around the water. Mm. You should take care that your soldiers don't fall ill to the diseases that go around. Mm. How amazing of you, Pang Tong, to figure that out at a glance. Actually, that is something that caught my attention as well. Do you think there's anything we could do? Mm. Hmm. Well, let's see. The people of the north appear unused to dealing with winds and waves in particular. How about we link the sterns and bows of your ships together with chains of iron? And then... On top of those, we could lay planks of wood to use as footholds. With this, regardless of how rough the waves may be, there will be no need to worry about losing your footing. It should allow you to fight just as well as on land. Mm. Mm. How clever. I'll have that done at once. Cao Cao quickly decided and prepared chains and large nails. Soon enough, the fleet of the Cao Cao force was fortified with chains of iron. They were no longer affected by the wings, uh, winds and waves of the Yangtze. Receiving your guidance before the battle with the Sun Chuan force has truly been a blessing. Peng Tong, why don't you come and join us? Would you serve me? I'm grateful for your words, but I have no interest in riches. If you are to reward me, I ask only that you protect my family after you take control of Jiang Nan. Very well. I promise to do so. If you ever change your mind at any time, I'd be pleased to bring you into my service. Again, thank you for your words. I will take my leave now. <laughs> I see. So you had them bind the fleet together with chains of iron. <laughs> Clever work. The fire attack shall now work perfectly. Once you set the South South Force fleet aflame, they'll have nowhere to escape to. <laughs> Henceforth, let us call this plot Linked Fetters. Thank you, Peng Tong. Without your help, my plan wouldn't have worked at all. <laughs> Cao Cao, just you wait and see. The Sun Wu Navy shall burn your foolish ambitions to ashes. Zhou Yu, Peng Tong uh, have trust. Uh, Cao Cao and Peng Tong also have trust somehow. <laughs> 
and uh, Pang Tong uh, levels up a bit. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, all right, uh, so uh, this is the Battle of Chibi. I think we'll do that in the next episode. That deserves its own episode, to be honest. Um, player, uh, oh, we can just find someone to get married, huh? Uh, looks like we can do that whenever, so uh, that sounds like a pretty good idea, I suppose. Um, let's uh, request uh, to rescue the sun first. At the workshop, a civilian requests that you clear the false accusations levied on their son. Uh, yep. Let's do it. Lord Zushu, please help. My son has been arrested for stealing. He works very hard and diligently at the workshop. He would never steal another's possessions, no matter what. Hmm. Interesting. The plot thickens. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Um, the suggestion from Zhuge Liang has been triggered. Interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if we've done that. Well, obviously we haven't, but uh, do we have that one? Hmm. I don't see it on there, on the list, so... All right, uh, well, uh, let's see, uh, you know, if there are any ladies around. Planning is the most important aspect of war, to deceive the enemy and move your army to an advantageous position. In our next lesson, I will teach you a few basic strategies. For now, you may... Pardon me, do you teach tactics here all the time? Mm. Oh, the very basics, at least. I haven't quite perfected them myself, though. You are too modest. I could tell that you're quite knowledge knowledgeable just by listening. If you don't mind, could you come by here later? It's a location written down. If you wish to further your tactics, you can come by any time. Alright. So, I think we're going to avoid the tactician appointment. I don't think it's uh, sensible to become the tactician when... Uh, Zhuge Liang is a uh, perfect choice for it. So uh, we will be uh, just a plain officer. Perhaps we will become greater in the future um, if we are good enough. But anyway, uh, let's see. So we still have the bandit. Oh, we do need to be in Zing Yi for this one. Um, I mean, we, we can go back there, but it's just going to be probably the same bandit again. <laughs> so we're probably just going to die again. Uh, right? Most likely. I mean, we can give it a shot, but um, that debuff that you get for being wounded is pretty nasty. So maybe we'll avoid that for now. Uh, we have to complete the... Oh, we have to be back in Zin Yi as well for that one. Hmm. So, I guess we can go back to Zinyi uh, to investigate the shady official, I suppose. Hmm. Um, yeah, let's do that. Hmm, we can't even go there anymore. No, oh, that sucks. Alright, uh... <laughs> maybe uh, the developers might not have thought that one through, perhaps? Either way, um, maybe they time out. It doesn't... Oh, yeah, they, they do time out, so... All right, we just lose those. <laughs> no big deal. Um, we might even lose this, too, if we don't trigger it in time. Uh, we have to complete the Gather Evidence of False Accusations quest. So is that... Oh, that's over here, then. Yeah, interview the craftsperson. Okay. So yeah. I think there may have been rumors that that man stole it. Though I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Not the most confident answer to go off of. The kindly sort are usually the ones doing evil in the shadows. <laughs> it's quite a presumption. Whoa there, I'm a bit busy right now. Later. <laughs> Couldn't even get a testimony. You there, come over here. What's the matter, bringing me out to this empty place? 
I was told not to say this, but the thief is an official of this town. He was only caught stealing, and so he framed that young lad instead. I didn't think there are officials in this town that would dirty their hands with such evil deeds. I must right this wrong. <clears throat> All right. We have uh, evidence of false accusations. And uh, now I suppose we can uh, trigger yep, this uh, tale to prove his innocence. You want me to release the craftsman imprisoned for stealing, as he's innocent, and you're accusing me instead. I wasn't expecting you to say that. If you're going to accuse me, then prove it. Uh, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll prove it. Don't <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think I can. I think I can think about it. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to go well for you, buddy. Yeah, dumb official. So we're going to get two and five next. Uh, let's just throw out heed. What happens? Nothing. Uh, so he actually can't do anything but a single card. So let's throw out uh, that one. And now we'll ulti. Look at this ulti right here. <laughs> Bam! Headshot. Uh, cool. Alright. <laughs> Fine, I'll acquit the craftsman of his charges, so let me off too. Pathetic. Now come. You're gonna confess your crimes in detail. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen to me, but now I can return to the workshop thanks to you, Zushu. Thank you for very much for clearing my son's name. It's not much, but I have a reward for you. Please do accept it. Hmm, three support wisdom. Alrighty. Uh, that's good. Um, uh, I don't think we did our workshops for the season, so let's uh, do the science. 22 points, and then another 22 points here. Oh, no. Yeah, the great Lord Zushu. Rumor has it that you've got quite a silver tongue. Thank you, mm. sir. Yeah, so, so I... There's got to be a way to see it. Maybe I just haven't spotted it. It's probably even on this page, but... Um, it really should be like a mission right here. Maybe it was there and I didn't even see it. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll look more for it next time. I mean, well, technically we still have the mission, so... Um, yes. Kind of weird that it doesn't show um, what you're doing. I guess they just expect you to remember that. But... Hmm. Not sure about that, but that's okay. Uh, this is... Yeah, this is Changsha. We're in Changsha. Right uh, So we could inquire about, uh, you know, we could inquire at the market just to get our public attitude up so that we could perhaps uh, raise it here. But then again, uh, sort of metagaming in a sense, just because I already know what's about to happen here. Uh, we're not going to be here for very long, so um, I kind of feel more like, um, I guess, interacting with people. Yeah, let's interact with uh, Zhu Ge Liang, actually. Uh, or Pei, Pei Qiang, I guess. Ah, okay, our reputation isn't good enough. Alright, fair enough. Uh, he's unaware of us because of that. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, let's visit, um, Zhuge Liang. Looks like he predicted my visit. Uh, he, he would, he would, uh, discuss. <laughs> Excellent. More sympathy. It appears that we have something in common. Alright. Uh, and 
then we're out of action points, so let's rest. It is in Zushu. I hope you've been keeping well. Hmm. Hello there, Miju. It certainly is rare to see you in a place like this. If you'd like, why don't we head to the tavern? This is the same event we already had with, Zushu, uh, with uh, Zhang Fei, I mean. <laughs> Sympathy is increased. All right, uh, so uh, we have to do uh, Chibi now, basically. Uh, but this is the, still the preparation, so let's continue this. Um, yeah, trigger. Uh, this is the Desperate Measures. One night, just before the battle against the South South Force was about to begin, Huang Gai secretly visited Zhou Yu, who sat alone in the main camp. Oh. Lord Huang Gai, whatever could have happened for you to call in the dead of night? I've struck upon an idea, is all. Would you hear me out? It would be impossible to endure a long battle with Cao Cao's great army. We'll have to prepare a massive fire attack and wipe out their fleet in one fell swoop. There is no other choice. I agree. It is the only way. Now all that's left to do is carry out our plan. <laughs> that's the core of the matter. I thought I'd lend a helping hand in order to carry out the plan. <laughs> Lord Huang Da, you don't mean... No, that is my role. That is not something you should do. <laughs> Zhou Yu, you can always see through me. That's right. We'll feign surrender. To ensure we set Cao Cao's fleet on fire, we have to attack from the inside through a staged surrender. Here, I've already prepared a letter that shall deceive them quite well. Would you leave this job to me? But our enemy is Cao Cao. To fool him, we will need to take some desperate measures. If you, Lord Huang Gai, were to meet such a fate, I should rather... Silence, you brat! I carry the obligations of serving the Soon Clan. I constantly put my life on the line, and it is my honor to do so. I've already made up my mind. There's no need for you to worry about my life. Hmm. I understand your resolve. I am sorry. There's nothing for you to apologize, Zhou Yu. I get to be there to show that bastard Cao Cao the true sting strength of the Sun Wu. As you all know, the Cao Cao force has deployed their troops along the northern banks of the Yangtze with the intention of stealing Jiang Dong away from us. Considering the disparity in troops at this point, all we can do is to endure. Here, we have three months of supplies. Let us engage in a war of attrition. Hey! Zhou Yu, do you have any intention of winning this war? It's clear we stand no chance against them unless we finish this quickly. If we can't do that, it would be a lot better to drop our weapons as soon as possible and surrender to the Cao Cao force. Oh, no. Huang Gai, how dare you say such a thing? Have you already forgotten what Lord Sun Chuan told us? That he'll put anyone who dares to speak of surrender to the sword. Your insolence damages the morale of our troops. Someone, strike down this fool. Humor me. If you think you can strike me down, then come and try. Wait, wait Lord Zhou Yu. Lord Huang Gai, too. Please, calm yourselves. Lord Zhou Yu, Lord Huang Gai has served three generations of the Sun Clan, faithfully. Please, I beg you, excuse his mouth and have mercy on him. <sighs> hmm. Out of respect for you, Gan Ning, I'll at least not take your life. <laughs> but you will be sentenced to 50 strikes. Soldiers stripped the clothes off Huang Gai and, with no mercy, carried out the punishment with a bludgeon. The skin was torn from Huang Gai's back as streaks of blood decorated his body. Covered in swollen bruises, Huang Gai remained a defiant, enduring the relenting punishment uh, the unrelenting punishment ordered by Zhou Yu. Uh, to think that you would humiliate me in such a manner! How dare you! Zhou Yu! Huang Gai has suffered severe wounds as part of the extreme tactic known as Desperate Measures. Pretending as though he bore a deep grudge against Zhou Yu, he sent a fake letter of surrender to Cao Cao. At first, Cao Cao doubted Huang Gai's surrender was genuine. A report brought by a spy who had been secretly sent to the Sun Chuan force led him to believe otherwise. 
he finally accepted the surrender. Seeing his window of opportunity, Huang Gai gave the signal for Cao Cao to begin the strike on the Cao Cao force. So Huang Gai is uh, wounded, um, and he uh, feigns surrender. Uh, last step uh, for uh, the preparation of the Battle of Chibi is a southeastern wind. This is where Zhu Ge Liang steps in. Zhou Yu is ready to, to attack the Cao Cao force with fire, all but for one troubling missing piece. All that's left is to set Cao Cao's camp ablaze. If only the southeastern winds would blow. There's no guarantee that the wind will blow at all this time of year. A word if I may, Lord Zhu Ge Liang of the Liu Bei force wishes to speak with you, Master Zhou Yu. What is it now? No matter, send them in. Lord Zhou Yu, you seem perturbed. Is something the matter? <laughs> Nothing for you to be concerned about. Our preparations against the South South Force are going well. Hmm. I see. I thought perhaps you might be worried about the direction of the winds. <laughs> what? Nothing escapes you. I suppose I'm the fool for even trying to hide it. As you've already realized, the success of our fire attack against the South South Force hinges upon a sort of southeastern wind. But this is something beyond my control. As a matter of fact, I came here hoping to help in this very regard. Lord Zhou Yu, build a seven-star altar upon Nanping Shan. There, I shall pray to the heavens for a southeastern wind. <laughs> Surely it would be impossible to change the direction of the wind with simple prayer. But I suppose I have no other options. I'll have the seven-star altar built at once. Zhou Yu then commanded their subordinates to build a three-leveled, nearly three-meter-tall altar upon Nanping Shan. It is the seven-star altar. Once the southeastern winds begin to blow, I suggest you attack at once, Lord Zhou Yu. I understand. We're counting on you, Lord Zhu Ge Liang. And so Zhou Yu prepared the army for a fire attack, waiting for the southeastern wind to blow. All right, uh, our relationship uh, with Sun Chuan uh, changes to amicable, and we're in an alliance, so all's good. Um, and then, yeah, we can begin uh, the Battle of Chibi uh, whenever. Uh, for now, I guess let's, uh, you know, I guess we already uh, kind of like Lady Tsai, so we're already persuading uh, her grandfather of all people. Hmm. A uh, debate will occur as a part of this tale. If you fail, you won't be able to retry. Ooh, okay. Recommended int of 90, so let's give it a shot. Oh, you've arrived. Before we get started, I'm afraid I'll have to see what you've got. Oh, so she's uh, pretty good herself, huh? Okay. Wow, she's actually really good. All right, so we have to convince her that uh, you know we're we're, we're worthy of um, bearing her children or uh, helping her bear, bear her children, I guess, something like that. Uh, she has one three five. Uh, we have one three three. We're gonna gain another three, so we'll toss out a heed. And then uh, we'll do three rebuts. So she can do three, four, five in a special. I wasn't expecting her to actually do it. Uh, well, we're gonna get ones next turn, so let's do. Let's throw this away, I think. Yeah. Oh, we lost! Oh no! <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> and you two never meet again. Oh, that's rough. All right. <laughs> well, I guess we're single. Man, I uh, I forgot that if she throws out her special like that, then you just lose. <laughs> All right. That's fine, then. 
Um, <laughs> that sucks. All right. Uh, well, um, yeah, uh, next episode, I think uh, we will actually do uh, the Battle of Chibi. Uh, that is a, a very excellent battle. I don't think I want to even let time pass at this point uh, because I want to hurry up and get uh, Chibi uh, underway. So I think we will call it there. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, it's a shame we don't have a girl, but uh, some things never change in any of the uh, games that I play. <laughs> uh, this is just... Uh, you know, part of what you expect from the channel, right? So either way, uh, we will continue our objective next time in conquering the land uh, with the Battle of Chibi. I will see you then. Peace. Hmm.